of uh, about 15 minutes from, for, uh, for the press conference and the question. Good, thanks, Blair. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Uh, welcome again to the Ministry of Health. And thank you. I know I can count on you to include the uh, sign language interpreter in your frame. So uh, first I want to just start by saying that currently we have no cases of suspected or confirmed corona novel coronavirus in New Zealand. So that's a good way to start the week. Uh, just in terms of significant developments over the last few days, uh, I'll just talk about a few of those. You will be aware that uh, from Waitangi Day, Healthline has established a process for people who are in self-isolation, having travelled back from or via China, uh, to register. And the purpose of that registration is twofold. First of all, so that uh, people can be contacted to the extent that they need to be contacted regularly to ensure that their wellbeing and welfare are being looked after. The second is it does help with our overall public health efforts to uh, get ahead of and plan for any coronavirus infections we may get in New Zealand. Now, I do want to emphasise that whilst this is up to, it's up to people to register, this is a really important part of our overall public health effort. And we are working with border agencies to get the information that they collect when people come into New Zealand from China, that is Kiwis who are returning to New Zealand, we are working to get that information and provide those details to Healthline so they can proactively follow up with people who have not yet registered. So I want to emphasise the value that that registration process has. And just uh, liaising with the Healthline Chief Executive today, uh, what they are doing is contacting people proactively to the extent that they need to be. Some people have got all the support that they need from family, friends or their community, while others need quite a bit of support with basics such as uh, getting groceries. Uh, they may need to be able to access welfare payments. Um, some may have problems with accommodation and the purpose of that registration process is to ensure people can be assisted with whatever it is they may need. Uh, Healthline has had a, you know, a big surge in calls and in demand and they've brought on extra people to make sure that they can cope with both calls related to novel coronavirus and of course the usual Healthline calls for people who have health issues they would like advice about. I want to update you also on the situation at the Whangaparā or uh, reception centre. We're now on day five of the for the people who uh, were transported back from Wuhan directly and then taken to that uh, centre in Whangaparaoa. Uh, those people continue to receive daily health checks, as do the staff members who are working there. A number of people have had swabs taken on a, procure, a purely precautionary basis. They had some very mild symptoms, none fitted the case definition, but uh, as you might imagine, there is a low bar for us to do testing on those who are at the centre. And I'm pleased to say that overall, uh, I think people have settled in well. Clearly, there are um, restrictions on them. They're, they're confined to that area for 14 days. But I know staff are putting in a huge effort to make sure everyone has what they need and that uh, there are activities to, to keep them uh, occupied and uh, in a good frame of mind. And I just want to say that uh, we will continue with those precautions for those people. And also planning has started for the 59 people who are not New Zealanders, who were evacuated out of Wuhan, who are from a range of other countries, particularly from the Pacific. So we've started the planning for repatriating those people after the 14 day period has concluded. So two more comments. Firstly, just to summarise that the overall situation regarding novel coronavirus internationally remains rapidly evolving with a high degree of uncertainty and we continue to take a very precautionary approach to this and that is what is underlying our current uh, border travel restrictions. We are reviewing those every 48 hours. We've just done the latest 48 hour assessment and have recommended our advice is no change to the current measures at this point. We have uh, very well advanced planning and response those continue to evolve in parallel with the changing international situation. 
and both our health system and wider government organisations are fully engaged in that planning and preparation. My final comment relates to uh, some, an emerging story around concern around aerosol spread of novel coronavirus. In fact, aerosol spread of respiratory viruses is something that is well described. Uh, there are a number of papers on this with regards to influenza. So in effect, there are three ways which respiratory viruses can be transmitted. First of all, by direct droplet spread, as it's called when someone sneezes or coughs and someone is in direct contact with that. Secondly, through those droplets uh, settling on what inanimate objects, tables, furniture, other furniture, we call them fomites, just to give them a technical term. And then people, while the virus is still live in those droplets, um, perhaps picking them up on a hand and um, uh, transmitting it to their nose or mouth in that way. Hence the importance of good hand hygiene. Can't emphasize that enough. And the third way of transmission is through this aerosol. And that is when there are much finer particles that a person might sneeze or cough out or even breathe out. And those can be transmitted further distances. We are not talking about um, across uh, rugby fields or uh, large distances, but generally across a room. And so what's the management of that? The management of that is to ensure that people who are unwell self-isolate and don't come into contact with other people. And hence the advice when you have influenza or another respiratory illness, stay home from work if you are symptomatic. So I'll uh, finish my uh, prepared comments there and I'm open to questions. Uh, we're aware of the case where a large employer in Auckland CBD asked a worker to return to work even though he'd been in Wuhan for 11 days, uh, 11 days earlier. Um, and that's despite the worker asking to take time off to self-isolate himself. Are you aware of that? I'm not aware of that particular case, but I can uh, emphasise the importance at the moment. We know that the upper limit from the evidence for uh, someone perhaps incubating the disease but not being symptomatic is around 11 to 12 days. We're recommending 14 days as a margin of error, and we'd strongly recommend that employers support their employees to stay home self-isolated during that 14-day period. Do you think that it's risky that an employer asked him to come back to work? Well, well, I think it's contrary to the advice we would be giving, and I know that the vast majority of employers will be supporting our overall effort in this regard. So I'm sure that that employer will be will be reconsidering the issue. How many Kiwis have actually returned um, from mainland China since the restriction list went into place uh, last week ago? Sure. Now I did ask for that information, and my recollection is it's about four and a half thousand people have travelled back into New Zealand either from or via China, between the 3rd and the 9th of February. But do you have an update on the latest number of people registering and self, putting themselves in self-isolation? Well, uh, yesterday alone we had over 400 people and the numbers continue to, to grow. Again, just to go back to my earlier point, uh, I'm strongly encouraging people to self-register. It's in their interests and in the interests of our overall efforts. And we are working to get the contact details for people who have travelled back from China who may not yet have registered and Healthline will be proactively contacting those people anyway. Have you had confirmation that people aren't registering, registering even when they are self-isolating? Uh, well, there's a difference between the number who have travelled back and the number who have registered to date. Uh, I'm sure as awareness grows about the importance for people and their families as, and the value of that, as well as the importance for our overall public health efforts, that more people will register. And we are seeing that that is happening and there are plenty of operators there ready to take those registration details. And how exactly are people told that they need to self register? How do people, how are people made aware that that's what you want them to do? Sure. Well, as part of the information people are receiving as they come through the border now, there is that information being given to them to self-register and how to do so. And of course, we've had a lot of publicity over the last three days, uh, strongly urging people to self-register. I think there was a follow-up question over here. Yeah. So that's essentially one in 10 people that have returned, mm. have registered. Do, do you have any indication firm indication that um, people are not self-isolating? Because we, we have had reports that people are not self-isolating after I don't have, we haven't been provided with any firm indications. However, my sense is, and I've said this before, there is a high level of awareness, a high level of public concern. And I think that people will recognise the importance both to them and their families' wellbeing, as well as the wider community efforts to, to for us not to get into a situation where, where we 
put at risk community health. So I'm very confident that the majority of people, if not everybody, will be self-isolating. If they need support to do that, that is why we're asking them to self-register. Just quickly on the airborne um, element. So I took from your comment that, that essentially um, there has been reports that it is spreading this way. Is that something that you accept or is that something that we already knew? Or is that yeah. what, what's your take on that? So I think the way this has been reported is it's a sort of a, um, a worrying new development. In fact, aerosol spread of respiratory viruses is well known. It's well described. What's not known is the relative importance of that method of spread compared with direct coughing or sneezing, so that droplet spread, or um, where people might come in contact because they touch something that would have the virus on it. It is an important part of an important way that vir respiratory viruses can spread and the measures to prevent other people getting infected are the same. Self-isolation if you are unwell and of course um, very good hand hygiene and use of masks if need be to help stop that particularly coughing and sneezing on others. Is there any indication that you might be um, putting kind of similar travel restrictions into a flight from say Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, some of those places that have got high levels of um, cases now? Not at this stage. And in fact, the relative number of cases in countries outside of of China it is very small. I mean, total number of cases. I think Japan is the next highest and it's still a, a very small number of cases relative to China, where still 98 or 99 percent of the cases are with that epicenter, the large majority of cases still in Wuhan province, uh, Wuhan city or, or, or in the province. Any other questions about anything I've spoken about? If not, thank you very much. I really appreciate your ongoing interest and uh, support for the public health response. Kia ora koutou.